I'm here in the Bug Farms Wall Garden and I'm going to do my best to do just a few minutes of very quick bio blitz where I look for insects and also explain the habitats they live in. So hopefully it will enthuse you to be able to go out and do the same at home. Okay, so I'm going to set a timer and then we're just going to whiz around and see what we can find. Go. Right. So the first thing as we come in, the bug farm garden here, it's full of colour and we can hear buzzing noises, this beautiful sound of nature. And what that is, yes, here we go, it's a common carder bee that's in here in this foxglove. And we've also got a white-tailed bumblebee over there and a red-tailed bumblebee as well, all using these long flowers because they have really long tongues. So long flowers, long tongues, bumblebees, and then we've got these daisy-like flowers. We've got oxeye daisy here and that's for hoverflies. So other really, really awesome pollinators. And insect pollinators pollinate one in every three mouthfuls of food that we eat. So important. Okay, what else have we got? We've got a thick leg, oh, I love this, thick-legged flower beetle, this metallic green beetle sitting on the flower with these wonderful thick back legs, almost like a weightlifter. As we walk around through the long grass, you have to have long grass. So look in long grass, we've got nymphs of grasshoppers. It's the first day that I've seen them this year. They're all hopping around and long grass is so, so important because lots of butterflies lay their eggs on grass stems as well. So leave areas of grass uncut, let the flowers and the grasses go crazy. Another thing you have to have is a stone pile and you also have to have a log pile as well. Stone pile, this is kind of the home for your pest control team. What have we got in here? We've got, yeah, we've got a black clock ground beetle. So lots of ground beetles live in stone piles as well as centipedes and these ones will eat slug and snail eggs. So brilliant, brilliant things to have in the garden. And then, it, oh yeah, on the log pile, cardinal beetle, this pillar box red beetle with black legs. Beautiful, beautiful beetles. And then, as you can imagine here, we, we don't weed a lot, so we've got goosegrass, wonderful sticky weed, and this is the food plant for the bloody nose beetle. And the grub, the larva of the bloody nose beetle, is this beautiful centimetre long metallic blackish green Michelin man looking creature. It looks like a little alien and it munches along and then later in the year it will actually pupate and then it will turn into the adult bloody nose beetle. It's almost like a blueberry on legs. You have to have a pond. A pond can be anything from a bucket of water that you just stick outside and leave to a wildlife pond. We've got a little one here and it is full of life. We've got, yep, yeah, whirligig beetles, these shiny black beetles whizzing around on the surface. They've got bifocal eyes so they can look for predators above and prey below. Really cool creatures. <gasps> And this is one of my favourite dragonflies, the emperor dragonfly. It must be almost 10 centimetres long. And it's, oh, the colours, it's turquoise and lime green and yellow. And it's just sitting out of the water now as it, it's emerged out of the water because the dragonfly larvae live un, under the water. So have a pond, get a net, go and have a dip, put it into a bucket, see what you find. Oh, it's, it's so exciting. It's like a different world. Right, that's my timer. <laughs> I've got my dog here helping me as well. Let me dismiss the timer thank you Alfie and and that's my mini garden bio blitz done I'm gonna have to carry on just for 10 seconds to say that if you get the chance build a bug hotel it, it doesn't have to be anything fancy but you will get so much joy out of building it and then seeing insects coming to use it that it's well worth it and what you have from whether it's a window box, whether it's a pile of stones on your front doorstep, that, that's you creating wildlife habitat. Uh, and wildlife's struggling at the moment. Like it's, it's a massive decline. So if you're doing that, you're being part of the solution, you're helping. But also the, the well-being that you get from being out with wildlife it, it is just phenomenal. And I encourage everybody to go outside just have a look, immerse yourself in nature and I can guarantee you that it will make your day.